it's time for some winter wonderland inspiration. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back, y'all. The first project is going to be a winter ladder. I have some of these snowy willow picks from Dollar Tree. Some snowy picks that I don't know where I got them from. And these two little cardinals, they have a little bit of a different position and they came from Dollar General. Some zip ties and a wooden ladder that I thrifted. That wooden ladder is about 30 inches long. I'll start this very easy project by putting down one willow pick. I'm leaving the entire thing together, not cutting it apart. Surprise, surprise, same here, whole pick. This is such an easy project if you've got a ladder. So easy. Gonna use a zip tie, go around the back, pull it through till it's tight, and it's sitting right on the front facing of the ladder. You can cut off that extra, and then we're gonna do the same thing in the opposite direction, almost like making a swag. So I'm just gonna kind of feed this up through here, and then we'll add the next snowy pine pick right on top with another zip tie. You can get zip ties from Dollar Tree and you can get them from lots of different stores. I'm gonna fluff out these willow branches under here just a little bit, just to kind of splay them out. Give it a little more dimension because we love dimension, don't we? We don't want anything flat. We want something to be interesting to the eye. I'm gonna do the same thing up top, just gonna kind of move it around a little. Then I'm gonna place my birds on the ladder. They're taking a little shelter on the ladder. So I think I want this one in the center piece. Or the, well it's not the center wrong, but I'm gonna put it in the center of this step on the ladder. Hold it there for a minute until it is firmly attached. Now I'm using Gorilla Glue here, so you wanna use something that's got some strong bonding so it doesn't come off. Ideally, I would like to be able to put this on my porch or hang it on my porch, so I want something that's not gonna come apart in the elements. I'm gonna put this one right here and turn him just a little bit. So the opening there, I left open in case I wanted to do something different, but I decided another pick here would be the perfect thing. So I just cut the end off, laid it kind of sideways, and I'm just going to zip tie that down right in the middle. Now, of course, if you want to put some snow on the steps, you can certainly put some snow on each of the little steps of the ladder. My husband suggested that after the fact, and yes, that would be the perfect thing to do, um, is to add some snow to those steps. But whatever you wanna do, you can make it easy. I think this looks totally fine as it is, but that's up to you to make it your own. Whatever you like, go ahead and do it. You can add some berries in here. You can use a little hot glue if things are getting out of control. You could put a nest in there. However you like it, it's gonna be the perfect way to bring you some joy. The next project is gonna be Frosty's Hat. I thrifted this little basket hat, basket weave hat, I don't know. It's like a bluish black color and um, we're gonna just deconstruct it because I like the bones of it, but we're gonna change it a bit. So just remember what it looks like now. I'm gonna cut the hat band off and when I pull the glue, it does leave a little spot there, but that doesn't matter. It has quite a bit of dust on it. Um, so when I do baskets and wreaths that are dusty, I just take a big brush and just brush at it and it gets the dust off of it. And you wouldn't believe the dust that falls off. Look at this table, look at all that. That came out of that hat. And of course, the one little strand of paintbrush. Okay, so I saved styrofoam. This came in a, um, a table box. I'm gonna use my little knife from Dollar Tree, my styrofoam pool noodle cutter. It works really good. I thought at first, you know, that is so gimmicky, but it really does work nicely. I'm gonna cut enough foam to put in the bottom. It's not quite tall enough, but I got it the width that I want it, but it needs to be taller so that it sits right at the top. And I was making sure also that you can't see that foam through the, the weave. 
So I'm just going to keep kind of chopping away until I get the right, I guess, thickness to go on top of that. And then I'll fill in on the sides with a little bit of foam. You don't have to do this neatly. It's not important because this is going to be covered up with um, something else. So it's totally fine. A little hot glue, you can put that together and then shove some pieces inside. It's nice and tight. Didn't even have to glue it. So I'm going to take a piece of this, um, I think it's like a snow sheet. You know, you use it for decorations. I'm going to cut a circle out of it that will fit the size of the top of the hat. You can flip your hat upside down if you find something like it and uh, trace on it and then trip, you know, trim it out that way if you would like. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue right on the edge here to put that snow down because this top of the hat is going to have like a snowy appearance. And you could use a white uh, piece of felt maybe for this. The thing that you would need to make sure of is that the weave is not too thick that you can't puncture a hole because we're going to be placing florals in here and you want to make sure that you can actually get the wires from your floral down in here. If you can't though, you can always get like a, a metal skewer or something and poke the hole in it and then put your greetery in it with a little hot glue. So there's some options for you. So I have this piece of thrifted garland. It's got like a silvery um, glistening kind of look. It's, it's very mellow though, not really loud. I'm going to pull those pieces off of the garland and then I'm going to cut down a piece of ribbon because I want to give him his hat band back, but I don't want it to be that traditional plaid. So I'm going to use some of my wax here, antiquing wax, and then brush it onto this black. When you add this brown on top of this black, it gives it a warmer toned black. And for my decor, it just gives it a better look. This is not necessarily to age it, to make it look aged. It's just to give it more of a rustic look, more of a brown toned black or a warm toned black. You see, it does make a difference. I don't have to do the bottom. No one's going to see it. And you're just going to continue all the way around with this until you get all of your color covered up. You can get little um, snowman hats lots of different places and you could certainly feel free to use something that came from St. Patrick's Day maybe or you know a different holiday a New Year's you can get hats or whatever you could use something like that if you wanted to so just because you don't have the exact same thing is what I'm saying you can kind of apply it to to what you're seeing here on a different scale so I'm going to wrap this hat band around. I want that threaded side up and the rough side down so that you won't see it. All we'll see is the finished product, which will be the nice, neat trim on the top. And so now he has his hat band back. And I'm going to start adding down this greenery. I'm just going to use some hot glue. You can see in here, I don't know if it's because it's garland, that it, like one side of the greenery actually is sort of flat and the other side is... Um, more elevated so I'm going to flip it so that the flat side goes down against the brim of the hat because that's where we're gluing it to the brim of the hat not to the the tall part of the hat Lord anatomy of a hat I have no idea what the pieces are okay so what I'm doing is adding like two and then one then two and then one and I'm going back and forth it gives it a little bit of a variety and it doesn't make everything look so matchy matchy it's rustic you know it's rustic it's woodland it's winter wonderland we want to give it that movement and that feel of being kind of wild and out in nature and so we're almost done with this and i encourage you to use some leftover picks for this you don't have to use all the same thing use whatever leftovers you have from christmas and tuck those in there can you imagine some of that fern in there that would be really pretty too but i'm using what i have like I said, to make these winter wonderland pieces. And these are some of the pine cones that came in there. They also have a little silver on them. If you get these pine cones on projects and you want to take them off and reuse them, it's just a piece of wire wrapped on the inside. You just cut it and then untwist it. Very easy. It's just looped around it one time and then twisted. And then that's how it's put on the decorations that, you know, you might thrift. So I'm going to use hot glue. I don't want those wires scratching up my table 
I'm going to use the biggest of three, put it down first, then I'm going to take the medium size one and put it down next, kind of right beside it. And you know, I pick these up and look at it before I actually glue it. So I know I have in mind how I want it to be. It's a lot easier that way than having to go back and fix it. So since I've run out of brim over here, I just put the glue in the little, um, the sides of the pine cone and then stuck it into the sides of the other one. It fits like a puzzle, it's perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the top part of it and then I'll go kind of back and forth on the top on the sides. You'll see how that's gonna work. These little pigs look like little greenery trees to me. So I'm just using them as trees. I'm just picking some pretty ones that have a good shape that have that kind of a teardrop shape to put there. I'm going to use a little bit of that willow over there near the pine cones. That's gonna be almost like the feather in the hat. Then I'm going to make a bird nest. So I'm gonna take some of this berry garland, I guess is what it's called from Dollar Tree. You can get this all the time and in a bunch of different colors. Usually uh, the colors go by season. So you'll get more orange, like in the fall, and then the reds and silver and stuff like that. You'll get closer to winter time or Christmas time. So all I'm doing is a start off in the middle with just two loops, and then I'm going to expand the loop outward like a swirl. So the diameter is gonna get larger and larger as I go. Round and around, and I know this looks boring, but there's method to the madness. See, I want this to be, I'm pushing upward, and I want it to be in that shape of a nest. Around and around, and then you can just twist the tail around then manipulate the little strands so that you get it into the right shape that you like. And I'll put it right there. It's a good place for it. I'm gonna use some of these floral pins and just push these down into the snow and the foam and it goes in there perfectly. And you can get those little floral pins any place I think that you can find crafting supplies. I did not get mine from Dollar Tree. Mine were thrifted, but I know you can get them pretty much anywhere, and I can't imagine they would cost that much money. But they are very handy to have for some projects. So now the bird, it's actually a bell, but his bell is broken. He is glued down. We got a little cardinal right there in his nest, or her nest, whichever one. Then you can begin to cut your picks apart. You don't have to leave your picks in, in one piece. Cut them into pieces to suit what it is you need. So now these look like little trees. All the leaves are gone for the winter time and they're just branches sticking up there with a little bit of snow on them. And I think that texturally, it really does something to the piece because it's more of a woody look and then you've got the little trees beside it and they're so full and green and lush. And it just reminds me of wintertime. So in these little bags of assorted scatter you can get from Dollar Tree, there are a couple of different types of things you can use. So I was just kind of digging through there to see what my options were. And I found a little strand of this white pit berry. So I decided to use it almost like a little bud branch too. And then stick it with the trees. And then another piece I put with the pine cones and our little willow feather. And then there was a little piece of pine in there. I put that in for a little bit of a different look. You know, we're in the woods, you don't just have two types of trees. There's all kinds of stuff out there. So these little, what are these? I don't know, but they look like little flowers to me and I really like them. I think they're pretty. I'm gonna add those here and there around the pine cones on the brim and I'm also gonna put them around the bird and on the platform, you know, just wherever it looks cute, wherever I feel like I need a little extra something. There's also little pine cones in there. So I'll add some of those little snowy pine cones here and there. I know y'all, some people say I just do too much. I just kill it, I should have stopped four or five steps ago, but that is just not my nature. It isn't my nature. But I do highly recommend you do what is best for you. You can't tell people that they're doing something wrong just because that's not the way you would do it, you know? We've gotta be kind, not critical. Let's be kind and supportive of everybody's crafting. Just like when you ladies send me, and gents too, if a, if, a gent's gonna show me a picture of his crafts,
but um, you ladies like to share your crafts with me and you email them to me and I love it and I love looking at them and they're all beautiful in their own way and they're so unique because everybody does it differently. That doesn't mean they're wrong, right? Just means they're different. Different's good in my opinion. So I'm just tearing some more pieces off here and just placing them around in the greenery. Ugh, I love this piece. I love this piece, y'all. I really do. And I hope that you like it as well. The next project is the Winter Barn. This is another easy one. So I've got this little barn that I thrifted. Kind of dusty. Needs a little cleanup. And uh, it, it says celebrate it. Isn't that like a Michaels brand? I don't know. But um, yeah, I got it thrifted. We're going to change it up. Right now, it looks like it might be okay for summer or fall, but I'm going to change it and make this a winter thing. Consider that when you have other items in your home that you, you think that you can't use, but you'd really like to use and give it some new life. Go ahead and find what you already have. And I know you can get like little barns and little buildings little at Target Dollar Spot. You can get them at Dollar Tree all the time. Whatever you find, whatever you want to, if you want to flip something, you know, I've flipped birdhouses before that I thrifted. So just whatever's good for you. Okay, so now going on, I'm going to use this Mod Podge, paint this along all over the roof, leaving some spots thicker than other spots. I'm going to go around the bottom. I'm going to also get the edges there. You, you don't see that right now, but I do get the edges. And I'm going to put this on areas where frost or snow might collect. Again, this is my imagination because I live in South Alabama, so how would I know? Oh, okay, the power of TV, right? That's how I learn. That's how I learn. I watch it. I see other people. I hear other people talk about it. The fun part, we're going to take our snow mixture. Now, I just use regular old Christmas snow for this and then table salt, plain table salt. Mix them together and it gives it that smart, that sparkly effect. And it just looks snowy and icy to me. I do know what sleet looks like. Okay, so... We're going to tap it off. You can leave it on there longer before you tap it off, and that'll give you a, you know, that'll, if it's dried, it'll hang on to that a little bit better. But I'm, for purposes of making videos for you guys, I'm just going to kind of rush through that part so that you can get the idea of what we're doing. Patting it down wherever it needs to be patted down. And I think it's cute. So far, that's good, right? Go back along, look at it. If you need to add any more, you can go ahead and add some more at this point. If you don't find it until later, you can always go back and add it then. I left the fingerprint somewhere and I went back and fixed it um, toward the end, so no worries about that. See the fingerprint in the top? Yeah. So I'm gonna use a wood slice and I've put some a thick layer of Mod Podge underneath and then what you see now is the snow that I put on top, a thick, thick layer. I'm pressing it down into there because I want this to have pretty good solid coverage. And then I'll just uh, turn it over and tap that off. And again, you know, when you use snow, you can always put your remnants back in. So I'll take that tray, pour it back in the bag. I wanted to leave the wood edge clean, that uh, bark edge clean. And then I can decide kind of how I would like for this to be. Now, I'm being really ginger about this because it's wet. The snow is still wet underneath and on these items, so I'm trying to show you without making a big mess. But you get the idea when it dries, right? And you certainly need to give it time to dry before you start doing anything to it. I have a strand of icicle garland that I've had that I crafted with last year that I got at the thrift store and I always save stuff so these are just remnants and I'm cutting off all the short icicles and putting the large ones to the side for another project. These little short ones are going to be used with a little bit of help from hot glue and these are going to be the icicles that are hanging off the roof line of our little barn. So I know you can't see what I'm doing except you know that's what it looks like. You add a little hot glue on the top and stick it straight up into the top. I just hold it for a second. They don't weigh very much, so they attach pretty quickly. If you do not have little icicles, you don't have to put them on yours, or you can make some out of felt, or you can make some out of hot glue and a silicone mat. 
I've seen people do that. I've never done it, but you certainly can do that and you can just make your own. And that would be easy to do, I think. So when I can leave them in sets of three, I leave them in sets of three. Sometimes I have to do just one at a time. But you see, I've got them, I've got them on there. It looks cute. I think that addition really made a difference. I wish that thread wasn't in there, but it is garland, so that's how it works. All right, so if you enjoyed these projects, if you could give me a thumbs up, that is a huge help. You can always glue these pieces down if you would like to, but I'm going to leave mine alone. I'm going to take them, set them aside, let them dry, and then put them together. Here are the three projects. I went ahead and added a little light back there in that barn so you could see it. I think this is my favorite of the three. Frosty's hat. Very full and lush and winter wonderland looking. And then the ladder also, and we got the cardinals, which are near and dear to my heart. It's that time of year. It's winter time. Lots of holidays have happened in the winter time. And we start thinking about people that, and, and our fur babies that are not here with us anymore. And we'll go into a new year and have new experiences with new people we bring into our life. The first project is a birdhouse sign. We're going to start off with some scraps of greenery, some paint and a brush, school glue stick, a calendar page of your choice, and here's the one I'm using. This is the artist, and then a Dollar Tree sign. This is just a Christmas one that we're going to remove the tag, the hanger off of, and then just smooth out any lumps and bumps. You know how it is with these projects. Some are perfect, some are not. I'm going to start by adding parchment white or parchment something. And I'm going to add it to here. I want this to be kind of streaky. I always like to add a little bit and then layer it up so that I don't get too much on the board. And I want to kind of mimic this onto this board. I want it to look like it belongs together. And that's close enough to me. I like that there. I am going to just figure out where I want to put it on the board. Remember the little holes at the top because that's where the hanger goes. And then start putting down your glue. Y'all, I'm so sorry about the first post of this video because I did not have audio. I was having problems with my computer. I talked to a IT whiz this morning and he got me all fixed up. Would you believe it was just the drivers? Gosh, sometimes it's the simplest things. It took me several days, almost a week to deal with this, but he easily did it in just a few minutes. It's craziness, but I'm so grateful for people like that. Yes. Okay, so we got out all the lumps and bumps. Now, y'all, this braid is some type of a, I don't know what type of rope-like, paper-like fabric, but it actually came off of an old trunk that uh, I bought at a garage sale many, many years ago. And by many, many, I am talking about probably 15 years ago. I am going to just use some hot glue and put this down on the border, kind of between the sign and the edge of the calendar page. I want to be sure I'll cover up the hole on the calendar page so it doesn't just scream calendar page. If you don't have this picture, that is totally fine. Use whatever type of a calendar you have. You can use one that the bank sends out or that you get from any group that you're in or a church calendar, or you can get one from Dollar Tree because they have plenty of beautiful pieces there. Mine is rustic because that's what I like to do in my house. So that's what I'm showing you here. And I'm so into birds. I have been for a long time, but actually crafting with them and incorporating them in my home decor is something that I have been uh, enjoying of recent. If you've seen my cardinal videos, I'm gonna go over this edge too, the same way. I'm just kind of zigzagging it. I don't want glue like squishing out around that um, trim there because I think it's really pretty and I don't wanna make it look Kind of gross with all the glue globbed up. I'm just looking at it now to see if I want to put sides on it or not. So you could always use, leave sides off if you didn't want to use them. And what if you don't have this trim because not many people are going to have a trunk that they can pull it off of. Use whatever type of trim you want or you can use yarn or you can use ribbon or you can use raffia. Whatever you want to use to trim out your page or you don't have to use anything at all. But again, rustic, and I love to reuse things. So this is a perfect way for me to remember this trunk 
by having it right here. And by the way, the trunk held lots of things for my oldest two children until it just really fell apart. And um, I just kind of salvaged the pieces I thought I could use again. I'm just simply going to use some jute to do this little hanger and I'm going to put it around to the back, make sure that it's the length that I like, and then I'll be adding little pieces of um, just some cut up scrap paper here to hold it on the back. We can start next with a greenery and these are thrifted pieces that I have used on so many projects and I still have some left. They did come from the thrift store but you can get yours anywhere. I decided to pull off the pine cone. I'm going to add a little bird. This is like a little plaster, I don't know what kind of bird. I had a bag full that I thrifted at birds and mushrooms and pine cones and berries and butterflies. And so you'll be seeing those again this spring for sure. To make this easier to handle while I hand paint this little bird, I am going to just hot glue a little stem on the inside that fits and we'll cut it off later. I'm using some gold, brown, and blue because they match the color of the bird the, well, the birds that I already have in my picture. So I want him to look like maybe he just flew right out of that picture, right? He flew out of there and he just did his own thing and he has his own little nest outside of the picture. I'm not gonna show you the entire time I hand paint this because I am not a pro at this. This is just, you know, I'm a crafter. I'm not a professional by, professional by any means, but this was fun to me. I really like this. And it's just paint. You can always paint over it if you don't like, you know, the way that it looks. And you can use little birds that you already have, like a little bird figurine or a little birds that maybe you got out of those little, oh, what are those little gnome or fairy gardens that you get at Dollar Tree? You know, just whatever you like. I'm just using him because these are the kind of birds that are in my calendar page. But if you have something different in your calendar page, then maybe use something that comes from there. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of white to him to kind of make him look a little bit closer to what's going on in the picture. And you know, he's got snow on him. That's not bad, is it? That's not too bad. So I'm just going to nip that off, just like I had mentioned before, and he will be nesting right here. But wait, he needs a nest. So I'm going to make a nest. I started off by wrapping around two fingers. That was too much. So I just wrapped it around one finger several times. And then after that, I'm going to tuck that string up through the middle or the hole there and just wrap it around a few times so that it helps hold the string together. And then I will be adding a little bit of hot glue. No need for this to have a bottom because I'm going to collapse it, push it into itself and um, put it underneath that little bird once I get it ready. I'm just going to use a little glue in the middle of it to kind of push it together because there's no need for this to stick out too far, um, to really stand out too far. So that's what you see me doing, adding some glue in the middle, and then I'm gonna add some glue on what I'm gonna call the back of it, and then smush that down into the greenery. And then I'm gonna put some glue on the little bird's bottom and put him right down in the nest. Isn't he cute? Y'all yeah, think this is cute. I think he's really cute. All right, we're gonna move on to the next, and this is a bird shadow box duo. Some more paint, some more, actually I'm gonna use white instead of that. I have two of these little house frames that came from Dollar Tree. And of course, you'll need paintbrush and any types of little sticks, you can get them out of the yard, you can get them from Dollar Tree, like wood slices, you can thrift them. Just go pick it off a branch in the yard or on, when you're on a walk. These beautiful cards. You can see who was responsible for those cards. The cards were thrifted, by the way. I love to get cards thrifted because they don't weigh anything. And you know I pay by the pound when I go to the thrift store. Push the backs out of your frames. They come apart pretty well. And then rather than peeling off that paper like I had started doing, I was like, you know what, heck with this. Nobody wants to waste the time. I'm just gonna flip it over, use the back, and we'll just cover up the front to make it a new bag. I'm gonna smooth it out as much as possible. Y'all remember doing this in school? Turning the, the cards inside out, flipping them back and forth until you kind of weaken that center, and then you can just pull it right off. Love it, works perfect. So I switched over to this wicker white paint because the cards are actually more of a white color. They're not cream colored. And I want it to look somewhat the same. I'm going to go over in pretty much the same process as I went over the 
calendar page sign. Just adding on a little at a time till I get the coverage that I like. Now, what are we gonna do with the frames? We're gonna tint them with wood tint. The first wood tint is gray. You know, shake it up, apply it with a sponge brush. It's gonna soak in there and color that wood. Then we're gonna use walnut on the other one. I only have two shades and it's either really light and really dark. So I'm going over it with this walnut and I'm gonna go over the inside of the frame, the outside of the frame, the inside bottom of the frame, but no need to do the back or the bottom. Once you've let it sit for a little while, go ahead and grab some paper towels and just wipe off the excess. Now you don't notice that one as much, but look at the dark one. I should have done both of them like this because this really turned out pretty. That's such a nice, rich, dark color. I'm just gonna dry those off to make it a little bit quicker so we can move on with the next step. Okay, now we're gonna put these down. This card's a little bit too big for the width of this, so I am just going to trim it off. This is just like a little pendulum cutter that uh, I had with, you know, you can use it for scrapbooking, so it works perfect for these two. It fits perfectly on there now. All right, grab that good old glue stick, and we're gonna go all over the bottom you could go all the way up to the top if you wanted to because it won't make any difference. This purple dries down clear and you can't see it. But I want to be sure I get full coverage, which makes this colored stick perfect for me. Just adding a little bit more so I, I didn't go up high enough there, I don't think. And then place them down sort of in the middle. Keep in mind when you put your cards on here, and you can get cards at Dollar Tree, whatever something that somebody sent to you, whatever you want to use. Try to get it centered as much as you can because the frame, when you put it back on, is going to cover up some of the picture if you get it too far up, too far down, or the picture is too big for the background. So just keep that in mind. Save yourself the headache. Now we're doing the next one with the cardinals. So we have a snowy owl over there and I have the cardinals. So this is our duo. Just wiping off a little bit that I kind of made a mess with there. You know, you can wash your hands and get stuff off. I'm going to get up and wash my hands every time I make a mess because if I do that, I'll never get anything done for y'all. And it's important to me that I give you inspiration. After that's dried, grab your Mod Podge. I'm just using matte, but you can use whichever type you like. And I'm going to go all over the entire thing. On the front, of course, so that when it dries, it all has exactly the same finish. It's going to look kind of milky when you put it on, but don't worry because it is going to dry down nice and clear. And you'll see that in a minute. So notice the owl, how it looks right now, kind of foggy. And here it is dry, very crisp and clear. I'm going to use some fast grab tacky glue. By all means, use your super glue or whatever type of bonding agent you like. You don't want to use this, uh, you don't want to use hot glue with this entire thing because if you do, your hot glue is going to dry before you have enough time to get the back on. So just a couple of dots quickly, quickly after I've already put the other glue on to hold it in place while the tacky glue dries. And then you can add on the back some type of a weight to hold it flat. When you paint this MDF, these back, the little boards or the background right there, those will actually bow a little bit so you want to make sure that they stay nice and flat so that you get a nice clean edge, right? Now, of course, on your backs, put some paper on there and cover it up or paint it a solid color. But for video, you know, purposes, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Grab up any type of stuff you get that you have. Like I said, if it looks like it came out of nature and it reflects something that's in the card you chose, go ahead and use it. If you didn't use something, in nature, if you don't, if you don't do the wildlife thing, if you don't do the rustic thing, whatever card you like, find some little bits and bobs that match it. I'm gonna use a little wood block on a snowflake and put it down in here with this owl, and then I put a little. It looks like a tree stump over there with the cardinals. Those pieces of wood came from Dollar Tree, over where you can get the sand and the rock and stuff. That's where I got it from. Love these packs. Highly recommend them. Now this came out of a little pack of, I don't know if it was called vase filler or table scatter, and it had snowy pine cones and vines and um, some other little bits and bobs in there. And um, I love it for these types of projects because you can really, really make rustic projects have more dimension and depth and just look more, you know, more rustic, I guess. 
more wild, and you know I like the wild stuff. So these little branches are kind of wild looking too, aren't they? Now those actually came in an arrangement, and I pulled them out, and I've been using them for years over and over different ways. You're just gonna add on here till you get it the way you like it. If you don't like the way I'm doing it, totally fine. Do it yourself. Make it your own. I'm here to inspire you. Not to tell you what to do or that what you're doing is wrong. Just to inspire you. You take what you like and just leave the rest, right? And by all means, if you don't like what you see here, you certainly do not have to watch. There are plenty of people who do not craft like I do that would be glad to have you, you know, follow them and support them. So just keep that in mind. I'm just going to trim off some of these pieces. They look like little flowers to me, even though I know that's not what they are because they're woody. But they are very, they're pretty to me. And they look nice in these little boxes. These pine cones are tiny. You can also get these little bags of pine cones and scatter and like silver and gold. I've seen it in other people's videos, but I don't ever buy it because I, I kind of like the natural look a little bit better. Just my taste. How does that box look? I think it's cute. So now let's get back over here to Mr. Snowy Owl, who I absolutely adore. And I am going to cut down another one of these branches just to give you an idea of how this works. You know, you just cut the pieces off you like. I'm just looking at the branch, trying to see what curves and, and what directions and, you know, will fit on this box. And rather than putting them on the inside, I think that putting these on the outside would be a little bit different and still very nice and rustic. So I'm just putting these together in a way that I think they would look nice. Almost like a, if it was like a little tree or a little bush that was growing there. I'm going to make a knot with my jute just around the bottom so that it holds all the bottom pieces of the branches that I'm using. Stems, branches, clippings, whatever you prefer to call those. And I'm just going to wrap it around here a few times and then kind of go to the bottom just to make sure that everything is nice and secure. Then I'll add a little hot glue to hold it in place rather than tying it. And just trim off anything that's extra poking out. And then I can glue it to the outside of the box. I'm just kind of arranging it, you know, I'm arranging it the way I like it. And it, it's kind of overhanging into the box. I really like the look of that. It's like the owl is peeking out of the tree. And given that the thinness of these little sticks that I'm using, having it wrapped on the bottom like that gives me a good wide space to put glue on so that I don't have anything falling off. I'm just going to tuck this little branch underneath there with a little bit of hot glue and add some glue here and there to hold it in place. Now if that's enough for you, that's totally fine. Make as much um, changes as you want. Put as many sticks, limbs, rocks, you could even put stones in there, you could put um, dried florals in there, you know, if that's what you wanted to do. But I think the branches kind of mimic what's going on in the background and I like that. It looks like it belongs together. So I'm going to go in with some of those same little wood pieces or the little, whatever those little white things are, and then this the snowy pine cones and I'm gonna add them here and there and then I thought why don't I add some of those pine cones on the branches really give it some interest so I went ahead and did that these are definitely not pine branches but you know it's okay and this is how it turned out and I think it's pretty I've got a little glue to clean up down there on the bottom but I think it looks nice and I think these are a beautiful addition to anybody's winter home How would you do yours? What theme? The next one is a snowy owl wreath. I was inspired by this beautiful little bird from Hobby Lobby. I got him on clearance after Christmas. Very good way to save some money, but you can get birds at Dollar Tree too. This came from Dollar Tree is a mesh ribbon in white. This is a burlap unwired ribbon with stripes. And this is a wired cream color burlap ribbon. I also have some of these snowy branches, some purely snowy branches, and then some little limbs with icicles on them. This is a, I think it's a plate charger for the dinner table, I think. That's what it looks like, but it is a perfect wreath form, I think, in my opinion. Perfect for rustic. So I'm going to just take my branches, and these are so well made um, that I don't have to do too much to them. 
and I like that about these branches. Already nice and full. And two of these branches, look how much coverage that gives on this project. Really good. I cannot remember where I got these branches from. To be honest with you, I do not remember. I'm going to use some zip ties and I am just going to wrap it around in nice little places where I can kind of hide the zip ties. That one will be hidden later. I know you can see it right now. Because there is so much opening in the kind of the crisscross of the woody background or viney or whatever that is background, I can actually stick the stems down into the weave which makes it nice too because I don't have to secure it down. It's stuck in there now. It'll stay right where we put it. I'm gonna hide another one of these down in there, cinch it down and clip it off. And then I am just going to fluff a little bit. They're on wired and plastic and the good quality florals do have wire down most of the limbs and it makes it so much easier and it saves so much time for me, even though I like to fluff bows and I like to kind of fool around with my projects. And you know, I, you gotta touch everything, you gotta adjust everything, but it still does, you know, in the long run, I think could save you money instead of using really thin, sparse branches, I guess. If you can find them thrifting, that's perfect. So now these, I only have four of these, so I'm just going to mix these in here and there and before I get them glued down, I am just gonna place them in there and see how I like them. You know, I'm gonna put them in both sides and then look around at the wreath and decide how I like them and which way is going to give me kind of a congruent look on both sides. I want it to be similar. Um, so cousins rather than sisters, right? So you just see me moving the stuff around here to make it look that way. Here's a little piece that fell off and I'm gonna glue that right over the zip tie. Then we're gonna start with these icicles. And I decided to cut one little piece off of one branch, weave this one on the top. I'm gonna to put another one here in this area and then the little piece that I cut off, I'm just going to add down here. Now, once you get your things where you want them, you can glue them in place. I'm gonna take 18 inches of each of those ribbons I showed you and make three lengths of ribbon. So three striped, three white, and three of the mesh. And I'm going to dovetail all of them. So we're gonna have nine pieces of ribbon to make this big bow. And yes, y'all, we're gonna make a funky bow. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab this one and fold it in half so that would be about halfway down nine inches would be about four and a half inches so that's where i'm going to pinch it together and walk my fingers to each other and then place it right in my hand i am not going to be opening my hand my right hand i'm not going to be letting go of that ribbon i'm going to keep it clamped in and only move my thumb when i'm adding another section so it's held nice and tight between the crook of my thumb and my first finger I'm going to alternate colors and patterns so that no two things are sitting identically right next to each other. I know you can't see all of that, but you get what I'm saying, I'm sure. And you can see some of it. You just can't see all of it. You know what I say. Once I get into crafting and I get in the flow of something, I stop paying attention to the fact that there's a camera there and the creator in me just wants to run with it. So that's kind of what was happening here. You know what I mean if you craft, right? You get it. So far, this is how it looks. All of the loops on the top and the tails are on the bottom, and I'm gonna continue to add until I get all nine pieces in my hand. And y'all, I have small hands, but I was able to hold all this. If you have arthritis, if you have problems with your hands, if you have really small hands, whatever the situation may be, and mine are small, you can use a clamp instead. You can just use some type of a clippy here, a chip clippy, uh, any type of a laundry clip. You can just use that to hold your bundle together to help you manage it until you get it all into one piece. Now I'm still holding this. I'm gonna, dra I'm gonna grab a zip tie and then place it around there. Still holding it, I have not let go. I'm going right around the bundle. Still have not let go. I'm doing this with my left hand, tightening it down and then you can let go. Once you get it right where you want it, clip it off, and then you can fluff. 
Now on these funky bows, I like to start by flipping out the bottom. So I flip it over and put it on its top. And then you wanna flip the little tails away from each other so that you don't have any two of the same pattern side by side. This is just gonna give it more interest. It just is a better look. Um, just in my opinion, just in my opinion. So if you kind of look at these striped ones, that would be a good way for you to know what I mean. You see that I am flipping them all down facing the table because that will be the top of the bow when we flip it over. So they're all facing the table, right? All those stripes are down facing the table. And when we flip the bow, now you can see all the tails, all the patterns and the size, right? So now I'm just going to start kind of flipping and flicking around with those loops. And even though the other two pieces do not have wire in them, the uh, stripe ribbon and the mesh ribbon, they really do hold their own in this little bow, I think. Makes a funky bow very easy for these types of projects. Looks complicated is very easy. So since I forgot to thread a pipe cleaner through here, I'm just going to take a piece of floral wire and go through a couple of layers on the bottom. I'm just kind of threading this through. You just poke it through the weave of that burlap and it's a perfect way to save your project. I don't know why in the world I cannot remember to put a daggone something in my bows when I make them. I always forget, but there's always a solution. Could have glued it down if I wanted to, but no, I didn't have to. Now we got our wire, I'm gonna cinch it around the back and then poke it back into that frame. And it makes a beautiful little bow for this arrangement, I think. Now you can choose how you want to um, kind of put your frame. Either you can do it where it's sideways, like I've got mine. You can do it where the bow's on the bottom. You can make it look like a swag on the top. Whatever you want to do. But I want it to look like my little owl is kind of nested in a tree. Look at this little hair fixing his little feathers. I could get some hairspray and play with it. He's so soft. And this is how he's going to look. His little limb, his little stem that was in the bottom just weaved right through there. I didn't even have to glue him so he could be plucked out and used for another project. And I like that. Here are the four projects. So there's actually two and then a duo. We got our little house frames here, which I absolutely love and adore. Here are the cardinals. Very pretty in all their splendor and glory, reminding us of loved ones who have passed on. And our little owl, our little wise baby owl, up here in this beautiful wreath. The calendar sign, kind of recycled some pieces from a trunk with some good memories in it. And then here's our beautiful snowy owl in his home. If you are new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. We do budget-friendly videos here all the time. Try to make it unique and something awesome for you. I offer you lots of encouragement. I appreciate you so much. The very first much. project is going to be a wood round. We're gonna be using some matte Mod Podge and a chippy brush, a little sprig of greenery, and this thrifted little I don't know, it's a round. We're going to call it a round. I don't know if it's supposed to be a breadboard or what it is. I have some scrapbook paper in this lovely plaid. I'm going to go halfway down here. So this is an 8 inch board. I'm going to go halfway, which is at 4 inches. And I am going to mark that there and then use my ruler as a guide to make a straight line across. I like that little green handle on the top, and it happens to be almost the same color green as what's in the paper, which I love when stuff works out like that, don't you? All right, so we're gonna start by cutting this paper down to the right width, close enough. We're gonna trim it down. We don't wanna cut off too much too soon. And I'm gonna flip it over and just trim it up here a little. I'm gonna use my pencil and on the back side. I'm gonna trace that round and cut that part off. I'm going to get as much paper off of here as I can before I start gluing this down. I'm going to take the Mod Podge and my brush, and you see my pencil line there. I'm going to go under my pencil line and glue this down. At this point, if you want to, you can go ahead and put Mod Podge all over the entire thing because I do go back over it with Mod Podge. 
but this is just how I started it. So save yourself time any way you can. Now my measurements, I have a little extra all the way around. I'm gonna use this little tool here, and this came with some vinyl that I bought, and I'm just going to flatten this out. I like to work kind of toward the middle and going outward so we can press out any bubbles or wrinkles that are in the paper. But this is a good quality crafting paper, so no bubbles here. Then I'm going to go back over the whole thing with the Mod Podge. Now, if you don't have any scrapbook and paper, that is fine. You can use gift paper if you have some gift wrap that's really pretty. Dollar Tree has some gorgeous gift wrap paper right now. Uh, they've got some with trees and trucks and some that look very woodland. So if that's what you're into and that's what Once you like. Once the board is dry, it's going to look like this. Now we have this extra paper on the edges that you can use a utility knife to cut off. You can use an emery board to file it off. You can use a sanding block from Dollar Tree. I think these sanding blocks are one of my favorite things in the entire world. You could probably get a pack on Amazon at a good price, but I just get them as I need them because they last a long time for me. Just, you know, doing the little craft work that I do. So now that part is done, we're going to add our little greenery pick. Dollar Tree, again, has lots of greenery picks. I saw some gorgeous, um, it's almost like an evergreen pick there that I didn't get because I have plenty at home. But uh, yeah, really, really pretty stuff right now at Dollar Tree. Hopefully you can find something that suits your tastes and coordinates with your paper and your theme. Y'all know I live in a cabin by the lake and my heart is in the rustic woodland stuff. I'm gonna do a little bit of everything for y'all. You know you've seen my vintage. There's more coming. There's more, they've got some Victorian coming to you. All kinds of things. But the people who started out with me started out with me in my farmhouse and rustic journey. So uh, I know some of y'all still love your woodland stuff and I don't think I'll ever get tired of it. I think that shows in my fall decor as well. So when you get your pick exactly where you like it, and I just moved it around quite a few places to see what would suit me best, what I really liked. I'm going to use some hot glue, and this is Gorilla Glue, so it is a really good hold. And I'm going to just use a clamp to help hold it in place, you know, cut off the excess, and then just go behind the thicker pieces of this greenery to hold it in place. Okay, so now we've got the pick trimmed off, so it's nice and neat over there. And this is how it's going to look. Now the heaviest parts of the pick are usually a good place to put your glue. That'll help hold everything still. And you can hang it and it is nice and secure. I love the look at this and I was able to cover up that little spot where it was kind of chipped off because this was a thrifted piece so you know just because it has a little damage does not mean that you cannot use it. I would love a thumbs up if you like this craft. Very easy, very quick. The next project is a wood banner. I've done one of these for fall before and it was fabric and I absolutely loved it. It's a few years ago, but now I'm gonna be doing one for Christmas. So this, believe it or not, this was thrifted, but you can get these at, I think, was it like a Target? I think it was Target, the red thing was a Target. These pieces of fabric came from Goodwill. I don't know if somebody was working on a quilt or what type of project. Maybe you can buy these, what do you call them, fat quarters or whatever, and then cut your own pieces. You can use pieces of old blankets, old rags, old dish towels, uh, any type of fabric, an old t-shirt, old shirt, um, whatever you like. When you're doing like a banner like this, don't just think that you have to put like a sticker on it or only paint it. You can definitely give it some dimension by using fabrics and then putting other things on here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So once I've got my Mod Podge down, I'm going to just carefully begin to push out. Again, you see me pushing from the center toward of out outwards <laughs> so that I can get um, any little bubbles or wrinkles out of here. I want it to be nice and flat so it almost appears as though it has been painted on. Then I'm gonna take that Mod Podge and go right over the top. Now you don't have to worry about bubbles with putting Mod Podge on immediately after with fabric because it, it's, gonna, it's gonna stay there for you. You're gonna pretty much drench that piece of fabric between two layers of the Mod Podge and you are going to be fine with that. 
paper is what causes the bubbles. But I think because the weave of fabric is more open than paper texture, that allows us to uh, get a little more air in there so you don't have trap bubbles and such. So one more time over here, I'm going to put the Mod Podge down, nice even layer, and I'm just trying to get this not necessarily centered, but an even amount from where it is and where it is on the other block. So you see I pushed wrong and I made a little wrinkle and I just pulled the wrinkle right back out. When the fabric is laying there also if you don't get it on completely straight you can hold the corner and pull it just a tad and you can get it straightened up. So it's easy to fix when you're using fabric because it's stronger than paper. And I want to make sure I'm going around my edges getting those nice and crisp too even that overhang and around the edges of where it's on here. Probably should have pulled the string out first, so you know you are you might want to do that first because you don't want to glue your string down because we're going to be adding other stuff to it. So set it aside to dry. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, and it is completely free to subscribe. So I hope you do. Here are these dried overnight. They look very nice. I love that they're all coordinated and that they all look wintry. You could actually probably use this after Christmas and use it in the winter time if you would like. I'm going to use my utility knife to cut the edges off. They're nice and crisp, but you can definitely use um, your scissors, like fine scissors, if you wanted to. Going back over here and trimming it off on this side. Be sure that you lay that blade beside it and hold it down firmly because if you don't, you may splinter the wood and you know cut into your sign or your panel there and you don't want to do that so I've got some chipwood letters here they are blue but it doesn't really matter they're not coated in anything they should take paint very well I know that there are five letters and I have five center blocks there to use I'm gonna use my paint this is a antique parchment and I'm gonna go over the letters I like this color because it's sort of an off-white, sort of a cream color, and I think it works better than a stark white with the patterns that I have there, with the coloring that I have. So I'm going to go over each one of these letters, be sure that I get on the inside and on the outside edges so that every bit of that blue is covered up. I'm going to let it dry and in between and give this two coats. I'm just using a paper bag that I have here. I'm going to cut a section out and begin gluing down the dry letters. I'm not going to put them close together. I'm going to leave some little spaces because I'm going to use that paper as sort of a backing. We're going to do a little extra something with these to give it a little extra interest. So when each one is glued down, I'm just going to kind of cut into the paper, leave a little bit of space on each side between the letters, and then just cut them out. I'll cut this section, and these paper bag pieces are so thin, they came from Dollar Tree, you just pull the letters right off of there. Doesn't have to be neat, save yourself the time. And then I'm going to take my smaller scissors from Arteza, and I am going to go all the way around here very neatly. And I'm not trying to make this look exactly like what is underneath it, but I want to give it a shadowing or a, a backing, I guess is the only real thing I know to call it. And you see, it stands out a little bit more. Now you could use an additional piece of fabric for this. You can use a different color coordinating scrapbook paper for this. You could put these on those same wood stars that we have used um, in projects. You can do that. Um, any way that you want to do this. Also, if you don't have chipwoods, you can use regular stickers, or you can stencil, or you can just do this without any wording at all on it. But I did notice the other day that Dollar Tree has like wood-shaped letters, I guess, that you would use to put on your stocking or something. I don't know. Those would be really good too, and a lot bigger. But I didn't have them at the time, so we're working with what we got. Now, I took the five pieces that are in the center. I left the two end pieces out. We're not going to be putting anything on those yet. So we have five, six, seven. We have seven panels, five will have letters, two will not. 
and I've already lined them up to see how I wanted the pattern to be before I put my letters on. And this is how it looks so far. And you don't have to use hot glue. You can use regular glue for that if you wanted. Now I'm going to grab that same little jute piece or get another piece of jute. I like the jute because it still looks natural and that's kind of the idea with the woodland look. So I've stacked them all up in the order that I know they will be strung and I'm going to add some white wood beads because I like the white wood beads but you can use natural, use what you have, whatever coordinates with the fabric that you choose. And then I want the largest part or the most of the string to be on the back, not on the front. I want to see my pretty fabric on the front. So I'm going to slide it down. I'm not tying anything yet, you'll notice. You can use tape around the end to thread those on if you want to, or a little hot glue twisted will make that into a nice little point for you. So I'm doing a panel, and then a wood bead, and then another panel, and another wood bead. And we're going to continue along until this is done. So what kind of fabric do you have that you think you might would use for this? What would you use? I know Dollar Tree's got some really pretty fabric panels there that you could use as well, but I haven't found any new Christmas at my store yet to be able to use those, but yeah. And I know that Dollar Tree has some type of these over in the party section, like a banner, blank banners. They may be fabric though, they might not be wood, but you might want to check out that section and see if you can find something, maybe with the baby shower stuff, um, or the party stuff. So once everything is strung up where I want it, and I know where the center is because I've slid them all around, I am going to make two knots, one on top of the other one, so that it doesn't slide through the bead. And I could also add a dot of hot glue in there just to make sure that it is secure. When you tie these knots, make sure that second knot sits right on top of that other one. It kind of, one part of the knot is going to loop over that bottom knot and make one nice knot instead of two right beside each other. I hope that makes sense. All right, and now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and make a double knot down here and it will be nice and secure. This is how it is going to look. We have also put the panels on that we have not embellished yet. You can see that there. The two on the end are blank but we are going to fix them up and make them pretty. There's an end piece, and here is an end piece. So now what can you put on those? Well, you can use snowflakes, or you can use anything that you see on those, and like the print of your fabric, so pine or Christmas tree or some snowshoes, maybe a cardinal or a slid, any kind of ornament that you like. But I'm going to use greenery here. These are some little pieces that I have that are just little extra pieces of greenery because I save everything. So hopefully y'all have something like this laying around too. And I'm just going to put some on the thicker part of the stems and press it down at an angle and then at the opposite angle on the other end. Just like that. These are the I believe in you, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I think all of us contain a little bit of creativity. It's just all in how you decide to nurture that and grow it. And I'm here to help you do that, and I hope that you can find nice. some joy along the way. Next, we're going to do a shelf sitter sign. We're going to use one of these little signs from Dollar Tree some cloth from Dollar Tree, an ornament that came from Dollar Tree, a couple of brushes, you might need white paint, some type of a blue since we're all about blue Christmas right now, and then this I got from the thrift store. It made its way to the bins. I'm just going to reuse the paper that came in here. I'm going to put the star aside and we can use that paper to protect the table. We're going to cut the string and the tag off of the ornament. And then on our letters, we're going to begin to paint. This is a beautiful, 
I think it's called a dark navy blue. It looks really bright when you first paint it, but it does darken up as it dries. It took me two coats. I went all the way around and let it dry. So you're gonna take this other side, take the hanger out, get your cloth, and I'm just cutting off the excess because this is one I've been using, so saving money there, using a remnant. I glued one side. I'm going to lay it down, add some glue along that edge enough to really get some grip on it. And this is Gorilla Glue, by the way, in this glue gun. Careful and protect your fingers if you need to. Then I'm going to get the wrinkles out, press it down. It's going to sit up and dry nicely and I will trim off the excess from that side. I'm going to lift the ends up and cut across. They're going to be about a half, no, maybe like a quarter of an inch longer than the end of the box is. And we're gonna fold this almost like you would when you are wrapping a Christmas present or a gift. Just going to glue that down. I'm gonna add some more glue. Fold the other side over. I'm just pulling it tightly so my corners are nice and flat. Then I'm going to add some right down the middle. Carefully flip this up without touching the glue. That's why you need to protect your fingers. And then I'm just gonna use a clamp to hold it in place while I go to the other end. So here's the other side, adding the glue. Gonna go right down the center, press it upward and over and clamp it. Once it's dry, take your clamps off, flip it over and trim off your excess on the sides. And there's our base. I'm gonna use E6000 and some hot glue to put on the bottom of these. I didn't paint the bottoms because there's really no sense in it. Then I'm gonna add hot glue in the middle Place it down on the sign, and I'm pressing pretty hard, hoping it will go through that fabric onto the block, but it didn't. So I'm using some short staples, and I'm going to staple the J in from the underside, and then I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to add some of that E6000, some hot glue, press it down, give it a minute to kind of cling to that. Then I'm going to flip it over, support it, and use my staple gun on the bottom. It'll go right into the center, and it holds it nicely. Perfect. Now the snowflake weighs essentially nothing. It's like styrofoam, it, it just it hardly has any weight. So we're gonna do it a little bit different to attach it. I'm gonna add hot glue. I'm gonna put it in the middle because the snowflake is going to be our O. I'm gonna press it down and then going all around the outside of that while I'm holding it in place, I'm gonna trace it out with some glue to really give it some more support. Now the fun part, get out the Mod Podge. We're gonna go across the tops of the letters and the snowflake and then in the cracks and any place like snow would naturally fall. You see how wobbly that snowflake is? Don't worry, we're gonna fix it. Yeah, you wanna put it there because we're gonna put snow on top of the Mod Podge and that is gonna give it a nice snowy look. So he talks about, uh, I think part of the lyrics is, you'll be doing all right with your Christmas of white but I'll have a blue, blue Christmas. So this is the Christmas of white. I'm putting some snow on here, making it really pretty. We've got a snow theme going on with our ornaments. Well, with our decorations, not our ornaments. We didn't do ornaments, did we? Although you could probably poke this in the tree if you wanted. Just gonna continue to flick that snow all over it, flip it over, tap it off, and get it all out of there. And you see everything's hanging on there nicely. I'm beating the you know what out of it and it's still holding on so that's good but at the end I needed a couple of staples to help me hold that down so I added some staples in the bottom a little more hot glue and finally she's standing up on her own there we go this is how that sign is going to look All right, a frosty topper is going to be the next one. This came from the thrift store. I thought it was cute. There were a bunch of them. I think it was like a little um, solar light or some type of little light for outside, but it's in terrible shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my white 
um, semi-gloss, rust-oleum, and spray paint most of his face. A little bit got other places, but that's okay. And I got a little bit of this putty. See, when I spray painted it, I noticed the little damage that was on the nose and on the scarf. So I decided to, you know, not just ditch the whole project. I thought, well, let me just go ahead and try. Because sometimes we have things with cracks and, and problems and we can work with them and getting, you know, where you can barely see. You can really fix it. I could have used some modeling clay, I think, here too. But this worked fine. And I'll give you a closer look of it um, once I get done thinning that out. Don't want any chunky spots. And I'm trying to go along with the regular contour of this. I guess this would be like a little carrot nose. And it worked out fine for that. However, I tried it on those cracks on the scarf. Not so much. They're way too big. So I just left them. I have some wicker white paint that I'm going to use to paint Frosty. Now, uh, I don't recommend you use a paintbrush unless that's all you have because it is streaky and it would probably take a thousand coats to get the streaks out. Or I guess you could use chalk paint, but I wanted something that's a little bit shinier because I want it to look like snow, right? So I'm sorry that I'm a little bit out of your view in some of these shots, but I just decided to use the same technique that I've used on some other things and just use a little a little dauber here, just a little stencil, stencil brush, foam brush, whatever, and just kind of dot into it, offload a little bit, and just dot it all over. And to be honest with you, I like the texture so much better. It's so more realistic and, you know, if I can imagine what snow would look like, you know, I live in South Alabama, so in my mind, it has a texture, like a sandy type texture. I mean, the look of it, right? So I wanted it to have that same look. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the top of his hat and all around the bottoms of his hat. I'm just gonna use a different sponge, go all over it with this pavement um, color. It's a, almost black. Once it dries, this is how it will look. Then I'm gonna go over his nose with some orange. I believe this is harvest orange or pumpkin orange, something like that. And then I'm just gonna take a smaller brush and start painting his nose. Y'all, please don't be intimidated by painting stuff. It's really, put like I said, I've got to have my magnifiers on or I cannot do this. I have to steady my wrist, steady my hand, and then knowing whether to move your hand or your fingers or your arm to paint to keep it steady. You just have to practice. And by no means am I perfect. I do not even claim to be. But I did do two coats on that nose to make it look opaque, and it was fine that way. I didn't have to uh, daub that on there. And then I'm taking some black buttons for his eyes because I like the texture. I think it looks a little more realistic. I'm gonna give him some button eyes and a little carrot nose, and I'm just gonna leave his mouth just like it is, almost as if you took your finger and just pushed in there to make his little smile. I like it that way, but you can certainly do yours any way you like. Now I'm gonna work on his earmuffs. So I've got some navy blue paint and it matches the yarn that I want to use. So I'm just gonna go over with a flat brush at first. I know y'all know how to paint, but for those of y'all who are new to crafting, and I know I've had several people tell me that they're new to crafting, I just wanna give you tips here and there. And I know that the ones of you who are more advanced are very patient and kind and understanding because we all start somewhere, right? So the smaller brushes to go around the edges and I'm just trying to balance my hand to make sure that I get a nice straight line. Now it is not perfect because it's hand painted. I can't do it perfectly. But I'm gonna do two coats, one on each side and allow it to dry. There are his earmuffs and his nose and eyes are done. His hat is almost done. Now we're gonna make a scarf for him. So I guess it was a happy accident that the scarf had a crack in it that I couldn't fix. I'm gonna use some of this yarn that I picked up at the thrift store. It's really kinda cool. I just thought it was like a ribbon type yarn, but it's not. It's like a mesh and it opens up. It's really cool. So I'm just gonna start by finding, I left a little tail down and then glued it on around his neck and then I'll just go around with my hot glue and just tack that down. I'm trying to get my fingers protected here because stuff like yarn and mesh and fabrics you can really feel that glue through. I don't want to ruin my fingertips. Nope. 
My nails are already in terrible shape. By the way, if you ladies do nails or you're new to nails, please don't use super glue on your nails to put false nails down. I did that in October and my nails have still not recovered. They look terrible. Oh, they're so terrible looking. Okay, so we're going to continue to wrap around, and I'm going to cover that up. I don't want that to be seen. It's so bulky there, though, that I didn't want to end it with a knot on top of that spot. I just feel like it wouldn't be natural looking. It would just be way too bulky. So I decided to slide it to the other side of where that plastic knot is and go ahead and tie a knot on the other side of it. This will make it look a little more flat and kind of disguise the fact that there's something broken underneath. I'm just going to trim off this little scarf. So if you don't have this, you could use any type of yarn. You could use strips of fabric. You could use ribbon, whatever you would like to use. I'm going to move that knot up so he can still sit flat and just glue it down. Then using some more buttons, I mean, why not? I had the jar out anyway. I'm going to give him some embellishments. So I'm going to take some white. A big white button with a blue, I don't know, it's like a snowflake, I guess, looking button in the middle that matches perfectly to the fabric. And we're going to put something on top of that that is white so the blue will help it show through. Now we're going to work on his hat. He needs a hat band. So I have thrifted some of this stuff. There, It's stretchy, some type of a trim, but I know that you can get the ribbon similar to this at the Dollar Tree. So if you're looking for something like that, check out the Dollar Tree. And I'm not sponsored by Dollar Tree, by the way. I don't think anybody is, but you know. When you love something and you wanna share it with other people, you just do it. Okay, same process with this button. I'm gonna just layer the blue one on top of the white one. Then I'm gonna put it right up here on this hat band. Isn't that cute? So now if I put my white on there, my little snowflake, you can definitely see all the little details through the blue in the back. I love that. I love all the texture and the dimension in this project. I think he's so cute. He's so much better. I, I should have thought to do a side by side, but I didn't. Just, you know, take my word for it. You can remember what it looked like, right? Now I'm just fluffing his scarf out. Now what in the world would you do with him? Well, you can use him as a jar topper, most certainly. You could put him on your Christmas tree if you're still doing Christmas. You could put him on a jar, glue him on the top of one of these Dollar Tree jars. That would work. Check that out. Mm -hmm. Or you could use him as a tiered tray topper. This is a little one that came from Target and you see how easy that sits on the top? Wouldn't that be precious at a cocoa bar? Yes. So the next project is going to be a snow ski hanger. I'm going to take some leftover picks. I love these and I grab them anytime I see them at Goodwill, especially the good quality. And this one came from Dollar Tree. It's just a uh, snowy willow, a little piece of foam, some jute, and then our skis. They have little hangers on the back. You could use it as a leaner though if you wanted to. So start off with your foam. I'm just gonna press this down on here and it's gonna give me the little troughs. Look how nice that holds on, but we're not gonna trust it. We're gonna add some glue right down in those little tracks that we just got, that we made. And then I'm gonna place it right back down where it was. Hold it there for a minute until it stops cracking and popping. And then, to secure it even more so, because you know how glue and foam are, I'm just going to wrap it around the middle. I'm going to twist it and wrap it around the other side and then tie it in the middle. I want the foam on here because it's so much easier to work with florals if you have foam to put them in rather than just gluing them flat down on a surface. I'm going to cut up these little willow picks and I'm gonna cut them into even smaller pieces too. And then I'm gonna start figuring out how I want these to lay and if they're going to be too big. I don't wanna completely cover up my skis. I want them to be seen somewhat. So I'm just going to pull at my little branches here, trim off what I don't need, and then figure out how I wanna place them. And I pulled one off of that one too. 
You can cut down your picks so that they are the right length and you don't have them sticking all out of your foam and you don't want your foam to break in half. So, you know, puncture it where you have to. All right, so I decided rather than doing it at a slant, I would do one in the top and one in the bottom and then um, work our way around. I'm just going right beside that, that piece of jute cord. I'm fluffing it out a little bit because if you don't use glue, you can always move it if you don't like it. I'm going to take some of the little pieces that I pulled off of the branches and just place those back down. That one doesn't have quite enough snow on it, but we'll cover it up. So you can get the idea of the shape. Then just start cutting those picks down. They are on wire and they're plastic. Just be sure that you're trying to push the wire part into your foam instead of the plastic because it will just bend and it's not going to want to go in there for you. I just look at it from all around and decide where I want more pieces to be and just kind of space them out. You know, you go by feel with some of this stuff. You just, sometimes I forget the camera's there and I just keep putting stuff in and moving stuff around and some people say I do too much, but you know, I think that's what's unique and individual to people. You do as much as you like and stop when you want to stop. Add more if you want to add more. So these flowers here, I want to add at an angle. They just look like little snowy pieces to me. So I decided it would be okay to go ahead and use those. I'm going to move these pieces around so that I can see, I can see all the pieces of my skis underneath and the poles that are underneath. And you can use little bits of hot glue if you need to, to glue your stuff down. Rather than using a, an ornament, I decided to use this plaque, which still I think is an ornament actually, that I got at the thrift store. It's metal on the top, the little snowflakes, so I'm just going to bend them out a little bit, that top white layer, to give it a little more dimension. You can see that it's bowed. I guess maybe that's why somebody got rid of it, but it's perfect for what I'm doing. So I'm going to add a good bit of hot glue and go right over my foam block. And that will be the center. I'm going to hold it for a minute because, again, we want that glue to hang on to it. And this is how it's going to look. <laughs> 